Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is my great pleasure to make presentations here in the third annual conference of architecture and civil engineering. I'm actually a civil engineer, mainly studying about transportation rather than architecture. So the, my presentation could be quite different <laughs> from earlier two presentations. I'm talking about the railway issues in Tokyo. But uh, before starting that, I hope you know where Tokyo is located, or Japan is located. Yes, Japan is really far east and uh, facing the Pacific Ocean. And uh, Tokyo is a capital city in Japan. Yes, Tokyo is located at the Kanto region, which is the largest plain area in Japan. And uh, in, in the vicinity of Tokyo, there are several satellite cities like Yokohama or Saitama, and each of them have a very big population. And uh, because of this big, big, very big plains, this area has uh, a number of populations, over 30 million, which is uh, actually the world's largest populated area in the world. If we look at just uh, Tokyo, Tokyo metropolitan area could be categorized into several types. Suburban Tokyo, yellow colored area, and the Tokyo 23 ward area. This is uh, kind of a CBD areas, uh, where the many offices, business places are located. And over 30 million people commute every day to the city uh, center. And uh, how can we manage such a very big travel demand? That is always a big question and challenging for Japanese uh, transportation researchers. This is very simple statistics. Area is uh, roughly 6,000 square kilometers, about 45 kilometer radius areas. As I told you, the population is over 32 million. If we look at only the Tokyo world areas, roughly 8 million people in 600 square kilometers. Of course, population density in Singapore could be much higher than here. But uh, Tokyo is also quite highly density areas. Then, railway. This map shows subway network in Tokyo. Like New York or London or Paris, we have a very big and wide, uh, dense subway network covering the center of Tokyo. But not only the center of Tokyo, we have a very wide urban rail network in Tokyo. How have how, how we invested and uh, completed this kind of very big rail network? Actually, there it is too complicated even for me. <laughs> I cannot understand uh, each line, all lines. So I always use a kind of searching engines provided by uh, mobile phones, company, or something. Uh, this is a very rough statistics about the rail network in Tokyo. Total rail network is roughly 2,400 kilometers, including a subway network 330 kilometers and a very short tram network. One of the interesting characteristics in Tokyo's railway is most of the railway operators are private, not the public. Only two public operators are working in Tokyo. So many private rail operators compete each other to gain more customers' ridership. Daily passengers, Shinjuku stations, this is the world's largest passenger number stations in the world, which has over 3.5 million per day. So it's very huge station. A subway, every day, Roughly 9 million people using subways. So without railway network, subway systems, we cannot manage the activities in urban area in Tokyo. In this presentation, first I will show very quickly uh, the review of a past railway development in Japan, in Tokyo, with so-called master plan systems. And after that, I will show some issues regarding the recent topics uh, regarding railway in Tokyo. We have traditionally uh, had many so-called master plans, which covers uh, 
but 10 to 5, 15 years long term development uh, strategies uh, made by mainly the governments. Before the World War II, our government have made a number of master plans. The first one was made in 1900, and uh, after that, almost every 10 years, something government proposed. And I categorized into four stages. First one, initial stage, growing stage, and quantitative investment stage, and qualitative investment stage. In 1920s to 40s, yes, right top uh, diagram shows a change in population in Tokyo metropolitan area. As I told you, currently we have over 32 million population, but uh, before 1940s, we used to have roughly 10 million. But you understand, even at that time, this city was mega city, according to the definition of the United Nations. We had very big populations. But at that time, we used to have a simply streetcar systems in Tokyo. Wow, how can we manage this one? But anyway, uh, and the official master plan was made in uh, 1920, and the rail development uh, plan was coordinated with urban reconstruction plan after Kanto earthquake disaster in 1923. One of the important points for discussing Tokyo's plan is uh, earthquake. We sometimes have a very big natural disaster, including earthquake or typhoon attack, and tsunami, etc. So we, our government should deal with this kind of uh, how, uh, or must, uh, disaster prevention issues or restorations. Second term is uh, growing stage. And uh, after World War II, Tokyo start to grow very rapidly and the uh, physical expansion of urban area is uh, very uh, substantial and uh, significant. And most of the people in the suburban area start to commute into the city center by rail. So the government proposed uh, first, streetcar network should be replaced by subway network. And also, uh, government introduced uh, a co concept of a direct through connection Direct through connection is the uh, right top figure's ideas. Usually, suburban railway connecting uh, suburban area to terminal stations and uh, subway is independent, no direct connected. But uh, in under this direct through connection concept, these two lines are physically directly connected to each other. Therefore, people living in a suburban, suburban area can go to city center without uh, any transfer or change at terminal stations. Therefore, uh, and uh, under this uh, concept, of course, reductions of a number of transfer uh, contribute to the better accessibility. And also, railway operators can earn more passengers from this concept. But one of the difficulties is because the two different rail lines are both different private companies. So how to get the consensus is always a big problem for realizing that these direct through operations. But the government guided quite in a, uh, very well to co coordinate the discussions between two rail operators. And uh, in 1960s, we had a very big problem about the traffic congestions because the capacity was not so sufficient but the demand become bigger and bigger. So in vehicle congestion became serious, particularly during morning peak hours. And also long distance commuters increased because of the physical expansions of city areas. Government proposed some more new subway lines and also introduced express services from suburban area to city centers. Additionally, we introduced high-speed rail in Japan. So how to connect to high-speed rail, so-called Shinkansen, was also one of the important issues for railway planning. So the new railway line connecting to high-speed rail was also included into master plan. And the latest master plans at 
now is, uh, was made in the year of 2000. And this one is categorized into qualitative investment stage. I was involved in making this plan <laughs> at that time. And at that time, we faced several problems. One is the rapid aging in population. In other Asian countries, they also expected to have a similar problem in the coming decades. But uh, anyways, our society has already started to face the problem of rapid aging. Of course, globalization, more international guests came and uh, will come to Tokyo, and also more communications with, between uh, Japan and other countries. Decline of urban rail demand, that is another issue. Because of a change in the people's preference of a living place. In the past, people prefer to uh, prefer living or in the suburban detached houses with uh, some small, uh, maybe, uh, green space or something, open space. But recently, younger generations started to live in the center of Tokyo rather than suburban areas. Then they don't need to use rail so long. Then rail operators lose demand in urban rail. That is another, another issue. So under this background, governments, including me, made the five targets. One is the reduction in vehicle congestion because we still had a very serious problem in congestion. So the governments try to average congestion rate at major 31 links to be 150% or less. Later on, I will show the definition of one, uh, congestion rate. The second is speed up rail service. Third one is a contribution to urban development. And the fourth one is the improvement of accessibility to airport high speed rail stations in response to globalizations. And the fifth one is the development of the seamless rail network, upgrading of station facilities for transfer, particularly for senior people because the more and more senior and old aged people started to use railway. So we should uh, make more user friendly, particularly at the rail station for transfer. Very quick <laughs> reviews of uh, urban development in the talk in the past. And uh, because of the uh, latest master plans developed, uh, May, uh, the government has invested, uh, no, exactly to say private rail operators made investment uh, for rail lines. And the, after the year of 2000, which is the years of uh, master plans, latest master plans, many new rail lines were constructed, including the new line connecting the city center to international airport, Narita airport, uh, or the, some other uh, urban railway lines. Then how five targets have been achieved? I will show very quick reviews uh, about the performance regarding the five targets. The first one is the in vehicle congestion. This, this is quite interesting uh, diagram. Red color line shows the congestion rate, which is defined as uh, uh, traffic demand divided by capacity. It's very simple definition. And in, as you see, in 1970s, that rate is over 200. So very congested and packed. Yes, people suffer from the too much congestion in the vehicles. And additionally, you should uh, note that at that time, no air conditioner. So in summer in Tokyo, it's terribly hot. <laughs> My father complained about everyday commuting with a very congested uh, railway every day. But uh, after 1970s, these congestion rates uh, kept decreasing up to 1993s. There are two reasons. Uh, there are typically uh, because of uh, investment by the railway operators. Blue line shows the change in uh, traffic capacities. Uh, which is uh, uh, normalized 100 at the level of 1975. So in up to 1990s, traffic capacity has been increased roughly 50% or 60% by the effort taken by rail operators. 
they, they had motivations because uh, they can get uh, more ridership and they earn more money by making investment for increasing capacities. But uh, please look at the uh, green line as well. So green line is uh, traffic volume or demand. Again, it's uh, standardized 100 at the level of 1975. Up to 1993, this green line had increased. But the uh, 93 is the peak and uh, started decrease after that. There are several reasons. One is, of course, rapid aging, less working populations, so less commuters to go workplace using railways. That is one reason. Second reason is because, as I told you, change in land use patterns. Younger generations start living in the city centers, so they don't use railways. But the other one could be our economic recession. Yes, we suffer from the long, long economic recession. So anyway, after 1930s, our railway demand started to decrease. Hmm. Then, interestingly, after 1993 or 5, red color lines are almost stable, <laughs> over 150%. That means the government target has not yet been achieved. And, uh, Blue line is also stable. That means railway operators stopped investment for increasing capacities because demand started to decrease. So they don't want to make investments because they cannot earn more ridership even though they made investment. So yes, in the past, or at least until 1993, congestion rate decreased. But in the past 10 years, 15 years, almost congestion level is stable, so the target of the national government has not yet been achieved, unfortunately. The bottom line shows the image of a congestion. So 200 is uh, this kind of situation. And please note, 100 is still some people are standing in vehicles. This is the definition of situations where congestion rate is 100. Speed up railway service, yes. Due to additional railway network, more people even living in a far from city center can access to center of Tokyo more speedy, more quickly. Contribution to urban development. Oh, I need to, uh, I, I, uh, I need to explain one thing. In the after the year of roughly 2000s, more and more very high story building had been built at the center of Tokyo. This diagram shows, the right diagram shows the number of floors of super high story building in 11 world area. This is really cent central business district. It is almost doubled, you see? One of the reasons for that it's a government deregulation about building regulations. Because our society suffered from the economic recessions, so ex-Prime Minister, Mr. Koizumi, he introduced the deregulations. More higher buildings is accepted to boost the economy. But uh, what is the result? Of course, more and more offices or residential areas, buildings have been built. But that increased uh, traffic demand at the center of Tokyo. You see, many stations in the center of Tokyo sharply increased the traffic demand at the stations. But luckily, in the latest master plans, new rail lines, these purple circle lines or the green ones or the blue lines ha were proposed and successfully constructed. So we managed to handle the sharp increase of demand. Another issue is accessibility to the airport. This is an international comparison of airport accessibility from city center to international airport. Blue bar shows the travel time from city center to the airport, and the red color shows, bar shows travel time. Ah, sorry, opposite. This is the blue bar shows the travel time, and the red color shows the distance. 
the left one is Tokyo, and the Chicago, London, Paris, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Paris, Hong Kong, and Osaka. Tokyo, Narita Airport, it is one of the infamous airports, which is located very far from the city center, over maybe 60 kilometers away. <laughs> but, and because of that, the access time to the uh, city center from the airport is almost uh, one hour in the past. But uh, after the introduction of a new access rail line in 2010, it was reduced into less than 40 minutes. But uh, still, this could be longer than London, Paris, or Amsterdam, or Frankfurt. So from the viewpoint of international compet competitiveness, the government still thinks it is necessary to introduce one additional high-speed rail connecting city center and uh, airport. Another one is a uh, seamless network for disabled people or senior people. Uh, this uh, uh, right diagram shows the share of stations with over 5,000 passengers per day. So it is a middle size or the bigger size stations which have introduced a non-step route in Tokyo. This means that from the entrance to the platform, no step. So even wheelchair users can go from the entrance to platform without uh, any troubles. So this kind of stations uh, share in 2000 was just a 20%, but uh, now it's maybe over 90%. So many rail operators in have invested more and more facilities, including slope or the elevators to support uh, disabled people. Uh, to access to rail services more and more. Oh, I used already 25 minutes. So <laughs> I will show finally the current issues because the uh, latest master plan was made in 2000. And that master plan covers 15 years. Now it's 2015. So currently we are, we mean, uh, including me, are discussing about the next master plans for next 15 years development investments of urban railway in Tokyo. Actually, Transport Council was set up by the government in summer 2014. And uh, so far, we have discussed a number of issues about the problem in urban railway network in Tokyo. And many scholars, civil engineers, or architects, or uh, in, uh, experts have been invited as uh, members of committees, and uh, we have discussed for advising the governments. Many issues have been discussed. Recently, Tokyo suffered from chronic service delay. Wow, it is true, because uh, Japan is uh, quite famous as a very, uh, very good uh, service for the reliability. But recently, even in Tokyo railways, quite often, service is delayed. And uh, rapid aging, of course, and also expected change in travel behavior, that is quite interesting topic for researchers. And further improvement of accessibility to airport, because uh, you know we have Olympic game in Tokyo in 2020. So we should improve further more accessibility from airport to city center for visitors. Improvement of accessibility to rail stations at CBD or rail service under the emergency. As you know, 2011, we had a very big earthquake. Tokyo was not seriously damaged physically, but the tra transportation service was actually suspended for several days, and that influenced many people's behaviors. How should we deal with and uh, improvement in station service quality as well. I will show very quickly. Still more and more investment for high story apartments building in the center of Tokyo. And that are expected to increase traffic demand in the center of Tokyo, particularly railway. But at the same time, as I told you, direct through operation connecting the subway with 
suburban railways. So service, railway service becomes very long, long distance service, connecting uh, maybe crossings uh, all over the metropolitan areas. Then what happens? Once delay occur at the center of Tokyo, that influences all over metropolitan areas. So delay is not the issue only at the center of Tokyo. It covers all over populations of commuters every day. So that becomes a recent very serious problem in Tokyo. Uh, there are several researches about the comparisons of uh, uh, impacts of uh, such a kind of delay between uh, directly operated lines and uh, independent line services. And the evidence shows direct through operations influence very seriously about uh, delays for many wide areas. So the government and the rail operators have tried to reduce such a kind of delays by making uh, more investment for increasing capacities, etc. Other issue is, is aging. This is the government's focus about uh, how many percent of over 65 years of people in the total population by region in Tokyo. Sicker area means uh, more percentage of a senior population over 65 years old. And uh, 2005, 15, 25, and 35, sickest areas is over 45 percent. So that means over 45 percent of the population in that area is over 65 years old. Wow, unbelievable. <laughs> so how should we deal with this uh, kind of uh, phenomena and expectations? And one of the interesting data uh, is uh, this one. This data shows uh, uh, horizontal line is uh, subgroups of uh, by age. So left to right from young to old. And the vertical line shows the uh, trip per person. So how many trips made by each person? How many times do you go out? According to our statistics, uh, and uh, different lines, blue, thick blue, or red. This is a different years. Every 10 years, our governments make uh, some surveys about the people's behavior. You see, red colored one is the latest ones. The more uh, recently, senior people travel more, actively go out, and the uh, in the year of 25 to 35 years old, they travel less. What does this mean? Maybe because of internet? <laughs> Young people do not actively go out? Or more energetic seniors make uh, connections with friends, etc., by going out? But anyways, to focus the future traffic demand is quite difficult at this moment. Although our society is facing more aged and uh, more senior people, but uh, how much traffic demand is expected? That is uh, quite a big issue for engineers now. Other issues is accessibility to airport. I will quickly explain about the problem. In Tokyo, airport has been already uh, 24 hours operations, but the railway is not the 24 hours operations. So many people are forced to use bus if they want to use in very late evening or early morning. But uh, unfortunately, bus service may not be so reliable. So many people say we should start 24 hour operation even in railway service. But the railway operator opposes against that because they need the time to maintain. That is a very conflict now, particularly for Olympic game. So many people request that, but uh, I'm not sure it is realized or not. Oh, oh sorry. Okay, this is, could be the final slide. Right? Uh, yes, service, uh, transportation service under emergencies. Yes. Uh, on March 11, 2011, we experienced a very big earthquake. Uh, and of course, many people were killed by tsunami or the direct uh, impacts of earthquake in Tohoku regions. But even in Tokyo, which is very far from the epicenters, we, uh, our society was seriously influenced by the earthquake. And most of the railway service in Tokyo was suspended for 
two days, three days, that depends on rail operators. And uh, it happened, it occurred at uh, three, 2 30 in the afternoon. Most of the people worked in the workplace. They should go back to their home. But the old rail service was suspended. How should they do? They walked <laughs> to their home, maybe overnight. At that time, luckily or unfortunately, I was in Hong Kong. <laughs> but uh, my wife worked the, uh, at the office. So she wears uh, high heel, <laughs> but uh, she worked for maybe six hours or seven hours, simply returned to her home. Many people walk because the bus service is stopped, paralyzed. All of the roads are uh, packed. How should we make a strong rail services even for such a kind of disaster? That is another issue. Okay, that's uh, almost the time. So yes, Tokyo is uh, one of the sophisticated railway cities and uh, we have a very long history of development of urban railway with uh, government-based master plans and also active and aggressive investment by private rail operators. And uh, as I told you, a new urban rail master plan was under construction and the guidance of the governments. And I hope it contributes to further development and a better railway services uh, for not only people living in Japan, but also the many guests, the people from other countries, or business people, etc. Okay, thank you for your listening. <laughs>